So in this last video of this lecture, I'm going to derive the uh, harmonic oscillator wave functions, but uh, I will do so without even uh, writing down the Schrodinger equation. Uh, we will rely entirely on the solution, that algebraic solution I presented that took advantage of the uh, uh, creation and annihilation operators. It turns out that they are very helpful in determining the explicit form of the oscillator wave functions, psi of x. So, uh, but before uh, we write down these wave functions, we derive these wave functions, let me uh, summarize what we know so far, which is actually a lot. So, uh, first of all, we found a way to represent the uh, harmonic oscillator Hamiltonian in this uh, compact form in terms of this creation annihilation operators here. And using the algebra or the uh, um, commutation relations uh, of this harmonic oscillator uh, operators, we uh, derived the energy spectrum of the oscillator, which has this form, h omega n plus one half, where n is equal to zero, one, two, etc. So, um, and uh, again, I reiterate that this uh, spectrum is special in that the level spacing between the neighboring levels is always the same. So it doesn't change as we go higher up in energy. So another thing we derived, and so here I'm being a little more specific, uh, is that given an uh, arbitrary eigenstate of the Hamiltonian with the quantum number n, as here, so we can uh, generate uh, the entire spectrum by applying the creation operators and annihilation operators. The creation operators raise uh, the energy of the system uh, by h omega, so we go from n to n plus 1, and in the case of normalized eigenfunctions, there appears this coefficient. I haven't derived it in the uh, previous um, uh, video, but this is rather straightforward to do so using the same methods, and it's done in many uh, textbooks, so I'm not going to spend time on that. And likewise, given the same uh, eigenstate n, we can uh, find the eigenstate corresponding to a lower energy with uh, one less quantum of h omega by applying these uh, annihilation operators. But what we don't know at this stage, we don't know an example of any uh, wave function, explicit wave function. So, and preferably we would like to see a wave function, let's say in real space, which is more intuitive than other sort of, let's say, uh, abstract spaces that we have been operating with so far in this problem. So, uh, in order to find the, uh, an expli the explicit form of an eigenfunction, let me actually focus on the ground state, that is uh, the lowest energy state in our problem. And this eigenstate, as we discussed in the previous video, is characterized by the fact that the action of this uh, a dagger a on it gives uh, simply zero. So it gives us, uh, it's an eigenstate with an eigenvalue zero, or uh, the uh, eigenenergy of this state is equal to h omega over two. So in other words, so the annihilation operator acting on this state must uh, produce a zero, and we can, uh, you know, write this annihilation operator explicitly uh, in real space. So we, we use the uh, definition, if you want, of this A as so. And here, what I'm going to do, I'm going to just uh, write down explicitly the form of the uh, momentum operator and position operator. So in real space, the position operator is really simple. It's just the multiplication operator, while the momentum operator, as we know, uh, is just minus i h bar uh, d over dx. So therefore, uh, you know, here I will have simply, uh, I will just simply remove the imaginary constant. So all in all, the uh, uh, um, equation, so I should have written perhaps here psi uh, uh, naught, because I'm specifically talking about the uh, uh, ground state of the harmonic oscillator. So explicitly, uh, the equation for this psi naught, therefore, becomes uh, the following. So we'll have this uh, square root of m omega uh, over 2 h bar x uh, plus uh, h over uh, 2 m omega h bar in the uh, denominator d over dx. So which is coming from this uh, uh, momentum operator. And this acts on psi naught, and this whole thing must be equal to zero. So here, what I'm going to do, I'm going to, well, uh, simplify this thing a little bit. So I'm going to put uh, the square root uh, here on top. I'm going to get rid of the factor two. And so uh, what I see here is that I can introduce um, a new um, parameter 
let me call it x naught, which is the square root of h divided by m omega, and it appears both here and here. And so this, you can check that the, uh, um, the physical dimension of this square root of h over m uh, omega is, the, uh, is a length scale, so it's the, it has a physical dimension of length. So this is, in some sense, a natural length scale for the harmonic oscillator problem. And so it is convenient, therefore, for me to rewrite uh, my equation as above in the following form. I will write it as x over x naught plus uh, x naught times d over dx. And this whole thing acts on the uh, wave function psi of x, and we want to produce uh, zero. So now um, uh, let me just um, rewrite this equation in a slightly different uh, form. So I'm going to write d over dx is psi prime. So this is going to be psi prime. Uh, and uh, in the, put this guy in the uh, left-hand side. So I'm going to have minus x over x naught uh, squared times psi. And so I just want to solve this differential equation. And you, you can check. Uh, you can solve it uh, formally or you can just uh, convince yourself that the solution to this equation is um, uh, an exponential, it's a Gaussian, basically minus x squared over 2x naught squared. So, uh, and this is, uh, let me just put zeros in, in here, which correspond again to the ground state. And this is pretty much the result. So C here is a coefficient which is determined by the normalization of this wave function. So again, this wave function describes a particle in the ground state of the harmonic oscillator. And so therefore, um, um, you know, the total probability for me uh, of finding a particle somewhere in space uh, must be equal to one. So therefore this integral from minus infinity to plus infinity of psi naught squared so I don't bother here with the complex um, uh, signs because everything is real so far. So this must be equal to one, and this uh, gives me uh, the value of the wave of the um, of this coefficient that multiplies this ground state wave function. So I can just let me just write it down. So this c is equal to m omega over two. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, pi. That is uh, pi h bar to the power one fourth. So this is uh, the normalization coefficient. But uh, notice that we have found the ground state wave function without actually solving the Schrodinger equation. We actually solved a much simpler equation, this first order differential equation, just by, by requiring that our wave function is an uh, eigenstate with an eigenvalue zero of this annihilation operator. Okay, so this is great. So we can now work with this wave function if we want, but uh, what about the higher energy state? So what we, uh, have just done uh, was uh, we determined this guy, the lowest energy state. So here what I'm showing, let me just uh, write down. So this is, uh, first of all, the potential of this uh, V of X. So this is X. And this uh, these levels here uh, correspond to the energy levels of the harmonic oscillator. And the lowest energy has the wave function as so, which is a usual Gaussian. So this is a typical Gaussian. And high energy states have a more complicated sort of texture. So how do we get these uh, eigenstates? Well, so here we can take advantage again of the uh, creation operators now. So for, uh, as, as we discussed uh, in the first uh, slide in this video, so the uh, relation between uh, the uh, lowest and en low energy states and high energy states, so let's say to go from n to n plus one, we can simply apply the creation operator divided by uh, n plus one, square root of n plus one. So if we apply it to our, eig our eigen uh, state n, we're gonna get, uh, oops, uh, there is no square root here, it's just, uh, n plus one, a normalized state which corresponds to high energy. And so what we can do, we can apply these operators, let's say to our ground state. So we can apply this guy as many times as we want uh, to the ground state. For instance, we can generate uh, this uh, wave function. So we by just applying this uh, derivative essentially to the Gaussian. And this will produce uh, certain coefficients in, in front of the Gaussian. And these, uh, well, not coefficients, I would better to say polynomials, uh, which are functions of x. And these guys, these polynomials, uh, they are called uh, Hermit uh, polynomials, which are uh, 
special functions and you can google them or you can look them up in wikipedia and in many books so this sort of uh, this solution uh, using uh, the explicit form of the wave functions and the explicit form of the Hermit polynomials appears uh, in uh, pretty much any book on quantum physics and I'm not going to spend time on discussing uh, these details. I will simply notice that, well, you can actually solve the Schrodinger equation starting from the spectrum up to the ground state and up to the excited states using only the creation and annihilation operators. So there is very little uh, inside that is actually needed from the Schrodinger equation, uh, which is, in fact, quite remarkable. So in your homework, you will uh, need to play around a little bit with this uh, creation and annihilation operators and with this uh, ground state wave function. And um, uh, I hope that you found this solution uh, illuminating. And um, of course, I encourage you to look into the literature to see more about this very important problem of quantum physics.